All right, so video number three. I'm gonna get right into it. Um, I'm not gonna put my face on the screen this time because you're pretty, pretty much just gonna be watching me stare at this screen for the most of the video. So I thought it'd be more useful for you to see, be able to see the whole uh, screen. First things first. Go to platform options. Options. Platform options. So you've got general, pro, real time lines. Go to pro real time lines and go to oblique pro to real time lines. Click that. What that does is take away all these um, lines that they provide you with that I don't think are personally useful. So you just get rid of that straight away. Um, go to template options. Now, I'm going to go to fonts. I'm going to raise the font size a little bit. Because especially me, I use quite a big monitor, so I need the font quite big. Because right now it's kind of it's a bit too small. Right. Yeah, so that, right now it's looking a bit better. It's a little bit more um, readable. Color effects, black. It's a personal preference. You can have it whatever color you want. But I like the the night mode versions of uh, dashboards in general. So I always go for night mode type uh, feel already starting to look a lot like the platform that you guys are used to seeing all the time my cursor so this is what you want to have in the toolbar this is up to you really it depends on what tools you actually use but I use quite a lot of these tools um, I like Fibonacci extraction I want that there um, uh, parental segment yeah that should be good uh, uh, yeah that, that should be alright somewhere no, I say apply to all templates. No, I don't want that, don't want that. It's up to you really, it's kind of up to you what you want. So you can decide what you want in the top. Okay, so. And then trading options. So you can get it, make it one click. I would not recommend making it one click because you can end up clicking the trade by accident that you didn't want to enter. Always make sure that they have to validate a second time. So always put always validate. There's nothing really here that I need to change. Automatic trader. I don't get involved in this. This is a function that some people use where they can uh, create some coding. Um, but ignore that. I don't, I'll stay away from that. Yeah, so far I think that's what I need to do. So I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. So the top is the toolbar. Here is um, your list. So it's the list of um, there's different type of lists. Uh, whether it's US Tech, uh, Major Forex, it provides lots of different lists. And there's my list. So there's nothing currently on my list, um, but you can add things to your list. So if you want to add this, just right click it and add to my list. And then when you go into my list, you can create your own list of specific stocks and. Uh, forex pairs or basically any securities that you feel that you'll be trading frequently um, so yeah okay so I'll go to that so I'll go. yeah I can leave unpopular for now I like to just have this go down the whole right hand side left hand side to take up as much space as possible that's how I like it personally performance I don't need that I want to exit that open positions very important you want to know what trades that you're currently in. So I'm gonna open that up here at the bottom. Yeah. Um, what's this? Don't know what that is, I'm gonna exit that. What's this, what's this, what's this? So these are the, this is the um, current uh, chart of the stock. So I'll put this here. This is the main view that you want. So you're gonna make this really big because it's what you want to be using. It currently, already has the MACD and RSI. Has a MACD and RSI. So if if this wasn't there already, if it was just like this, what you do is you right click and then you go to set in price. And then see this thing is it has a lot of the things that I use already. So I'm gonna delete them just so that you know how you would. Uh, put them if they went there. 
So this is a price. So right now you've got price. Um, I, I get rid of borders. I just don't like having white borders. And that's a personal preference of mine. I think it looks better without the borders. Keep that candlestick. You've got different ways you can display the the price, but candlestick is the the best one in my opinion. Um, yeah. So so let's put us this on the four hour graph. So I'm going to set prices. Now on price, this is where you add your indicators. Add indicator here. So first of all, I'm going to start off with moving averages. Uh, I'm going to put my 180 day simple moving average. Before I pick the color, let me put 180 days here. These are the these are the um, moving averages that I use for my strategy. Uh, in the interest of consistency, I'm going to keep in the same colors as I use on my graphs, which is orange for what the 180 day. I'm very particular. I don't know why. I think it's that one here. Yeah, okay, that's so good. Orange for 180 simple moving average. Make it a straight line. Make it a little bit. Make it a little bit thicker, just so it's easy to see. Okay, so that's the one actually the simple moving average. And then I'm going to add the exponential moving average. No, sorry. That's the simple moving average. Add another one. So here we go. Now this is the exponential moving average. And that's going to be the 15 day. 15 day EMA. So if you ever hear me talking about the SMA or EMA, these are what I'm talking about, these lines here. They, they play a big role in my trading strategy. Um, yeah, that purple is a bit too aggressive. Uh, I'll get a bit thicker as well so you can see it. And um, yeah, so we've got the two moving average lines. Now to add some more indicators. Two indicators that I use are well, three actually. If you include volume, I've got volume. Um, got the MACD. Where's the MACD here? So MACD here. Got volume. Got MACD, and then you got RSI. RSI. So I'll close that out here. There's no volume here because this is a. Uh, um, not even sure why there's no volume. Oh, because it's Forex. Let's go to Apple. You click on Apple, then you get some volume here. Alright, so. Now, I want to go back to trading. No, go back to my platform options. And I'm going to add display comments. So what that does is that it allows a little area underneath that you can add comments. I like having that there so I can uh, leave a little notes for myself as to things that I've noticed about a particular chart. Um, yeah, just leave that here. Good thing about that is that you can just control you. Actually, you can't right now. Oh, that's a fail. Um, normally you can have a shorthand where you can press control U and it will hide comments and open comments, but here's the shortcuts. You can create your own shortcuts here. I'm not going to do that right now because that's not really important. But um, you can see that here. So yeah, so control use display comments. Why is it working then? I don't know. Anyway, you can just press this button to close the comments. And that one to open it up again. So you can leave whatever comments you want here. All right, so that's the comments section done. Now the right hand side, I'm going to exit this. Exit that. Now, what I like to do is that I like to have. Let me, let me adjust this first of all. I like to have the volume at the bottom. Put that at the bottom here. Make that tiny. I like to have the the MACD. Now, I like to have the RSI below the MACD. Just, just adjust the size accordingly. 
if you can do that. And then MACD here. And then, um, yeah, so you, most of the price, you want that to take up most of the screen. And if you ever feel like you want to look at the price by itself, just press this box here and it'll just close the other ones. Press it again and it'll open them up. All right, so let's just make it look a little nice and so Now, so you've got the Apple, you've got Apple here on a four hour chart. Now what I like to do is I have to like, I always like to have the same, um, the same stock or whatever security that you have showing two price intervals at, at the same time so that you can look at it from different time scales just to see it in a different light. So I'm going to click right click here. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Apple here and I'm going to open another Apple um, Inc. And I'm going to put it here. Now this looks a bit tight here so I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Same thing here. Now for this one, I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna close this up here because it looks a bit messy. I'm gonna make this 10 minutes. So it just gives you a different view. Kind of gives you a different view of. Um, yeah, it just gives you a different view of the same stock and see sees, to see where it at, is at. Um, at this level, I don't know if I want volume. I don't think that's important right now. Here, yeah. I'll close the comments here because that's not important. You can see it under other time scale. So just gives it a little bit more space. And what I'm going to do is so I'm going to make this a little bit shorter because I'm, I've got something I want to put here. Now, uh, the problem is right now is that if I change, if I change, like let's say I go from Apple to Amazon. If I go to Amazon, this one doesn't change. So I have to be changing them both at the same time, which is kind of annoying. So the way to link them, these two together is to press this linking tool. Once you press that link into it, uh, no, nothing's happened. Now what I need to do is I need to exit that. I press the link into it. And then... I think it links now, so I've linked them together. So I press that link. Yeah, there we go. So, just to re, re go back on it, you press that, you press the link to white group, and then you link to white group again. So now these two are, are linked. So that whenever one changes, the other changes as well. I'm gonna hide that. I'm gonna make that 10 minutes. I'll close that. I'll close that and make that smaller smaller yeah just make it a little bit smaller now here i'm going to put a pro screen on options i have a pro screen on to be honest i actually don't really use this tool that much um i really don't use this tool that much but it's just a habit i keep it there because I don't even know why I have it to be honest. I might get rid of it at some point and put something more useful there. But for the time being, I can't think of anything better to put here, so I put the pro screen here. So um, I haven't actually created any pro screener for this account. So what the pro screener does is that if you set pre-designated criteria. <laughs> So if you set some pre-designated criteria, you can create a list of stocks that will active that will automatically join this pro screener list whenever they fit those criteria. So it's a way of um, earmarking stocks that kind of fits the criteria that you're looking for in stocks. So rather than manually going through every stock that you want, you can if if a stock uh, or share or or whatever is has an RSI of under thirty, for example, and it's its price is uh, its volume is over half a million. I'm just making up criteria. Then it will join that pro screener list, so you can create your own list. Right now, I haven't got a list created for this account. I've got cre list created for my pre-existing uh, account, um, but I don't use it to be honest. But um, I can make another video explain how to create a, a pro screener list because, to be honest, I can't remember remember off the top of my head how I made my list because I don't use it. Um, but for the sake of replicating 
the dashboard I've put this over here so this will have a list of stocks in my account so as you can see um, yeah this is how I created my dashboard for my account uh, I can, I'm gonna go through um, my uh, I'm gonna make another video going through my indicators and why I use them and also why my setup is like this because right now I've just shown you the setup I haven't really explained the logic behind this setup but for the most part it should be kind of obvious here is all the stocks that you're interested in here's a chart here's the indicators for these charts here's the same chart at a smaller time scale and here's the same indicators for that smaller time scale here's a comment section where you can write comments leave comments for yourself and here's your active trades um, pretty self-explanatory but I'm gonna, I might go into it a bit deeper in the next video so it's been quite a long video I hope uh, you stuck with me I know I made a couple of mistakes along the way but I made this dashboard once and I never had to do it again because it's saved having said that wait a minute I forgot to tell you something now what you do is save as save as and then you give this dashboard a name so not trader trader template yeah so you save it if you don't save it it'll go refer back to the default one and everything you would have done would have been in vain so please <laughs> save it um yeah i hope this has been useful for you and if you send me some screenshots of your templates and and uh or if you're interested in in my strategy watch some more videos that i've got coming up on the strategy that i, I employ when i'm making my uh, making my trades but for now it's not trader signing out